for all the three star or four star mm -hmm. restaurants are within your area. So that's a different type of search technology. Right. And so all of the, uh, like Yahoo is one of the companies that has announced that they are um, going to be acquiring companies that are taking the next step in search marketing in, in a more content rich way. Okay, because as you know, you have to be ahead of the pack. You uh, definitely do, 10 years ahead of the pack. Exactly, did I say packed? The pack, <laughs> head of the pack. And uh, Microsoft has that reputation, certainly. Bill Gates yeah. and uh, Apple. Yeah. Well, who I mean, else? As you, who is right in there with them? Um, Facebook and and I mean there are, there's so many of them out there now, Fanny. And I think I think it's it's not so much who the big players are as kind of looking at who the smaller players are. Right. And there's so many of them now. Like look at the um, the Russian company. I think it's Digital Sky Technologies that just bought um, two percent of Facebook for about uh, I think they paid two hundred million dollars for it. Uh, I was looking them up and I haven't heard of half of the brands that they own. They could be the next Google. Who knows? Who I mean, knows? There's, they're developing and getting behind a lot of smaller technologies that could take us to the next level. So Facebook has what? 200 million members, something like that, worth 10 billion if you wanted to write the check? Yeah, they're saying it's worth about $10 billion right now. Back in 2007, when Microsoft invested in it, uh, they were evaluating it at 15 billion. So it has come down a little bit. Uh, the speculation is, could it be from the economy or is it because we're not quite rising advertising online advertising as well as we could be or as well as um, people had hoped that we okay. would. Okay, so by that you mean the banner ads are sometimes not working? Like well, I, I'm not sure how you put a value on it or the real question, how does Facebook make, make money? Make money. So when you're on there, the, Facebook has actually come up with, at the time when they developed it, it was very forward thinking. It's um, very geographic centric and demographic centric. So when you, when Fanny, when you go on there, it knows your age, it knows your sex, it knows your interests, and it feeds ads mm -hmm. to you based on the preferences that you've outlined in your profile. Um, so advertising for me, if I want to reach your demographic, suddenly it's very targeted and it's actually a lot cheaper because I'm paying per click. And instead of having to target all 200 million Facebook users, I may be targeting just the, the Fanny Kiefer's living in BC. So all of a sudden that goes down to 1,000 people. And right. it's a lot cheaper for me to reach that sure. audience. So in that sense, um, that, that, that advertising from just the flash mm -hmm. banner pulling at you, it's actually giving people, it knows what your interests are and it's feeding you advertising to that, or at least allowing advertisers who think they know what you want to reach you more directly. What do you think it says about the future of ad advertising on television, on radio? I know everyone's struggling a bit well, the way that I, and in this, this economy, but it, what is the future? I think the future hasn't really fully unfolded yet. We are still in our um, infancy in online advertising. What we're going to see probably is a lot more integrated online video. Um, have you ever seen uh, the, where they've integrated, like you're watching a video and then mm -hmm. an ad will pop up, this blazer costs this much money, yes. we bought it at Holt Renfrew and it's by this designer and you can buy it here, buy it there. That is where the future will probably go with content. You'll be online, you'll, you'll click over it, or you'll be watching TV in an online environment mm -hmm. and you'll be able to search for things that way. So you'll be watching a TV show, I really liked what this character on Desperate Housewives was wearing I'm going to go over to the search panel over here to the icons at the bottom of the screen click on where she got that blazer and boom now I know that's kind of it's more it's a very specific right. search I'm thinking how long do we have to, uh, to remain distance uh, not very much <laughs> not longer very long. <laughs> uh, I was reading uh, uh, an article about the future of uh, hotels yes and the new rooms and uh, one day we'll walk down the hall and open our room with our cell phone right and and why not I mean with um, I think well I can actually I can answer that the reason why not now is because when you're transferring data through the internet or through a wire wireless connection or through a Bluetooth connection, it's not necessarily secure. So we have to work on cheaper, more affordable ways to make those connections secure. But the technology exists today right. to be able to do these well, things. Well, and if no you're in problem. a hotel room, you're thinking security. I don't yes. want somebody else's cell phone to be op opening my door. Not at all. Not at all. But I mean, if you think about it, our phones eventually will probably control everything we do from opening our door, our cars, starting our cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mini has a start stop button. Why not just have that start stop button or open? Right. Close button on my phone and well, just what if you lose your phone? I mean, your whole life would fall apart. <laughs> That's a problem, but you know, that is I, a problem. again, backups and things that, that as the technology evolves, 
there's other companies out there that are developing right. backup systems so that maybe we just all have codes with chips implanted under our skin and we swipe our cell phone by it Jeez. and you know Big we, brother we'll, is never, we'll never lose our code in our shoulder unless uh, well, someone cuts off our arm. <laughs> well, don't like that. Well, that could be the next That's a horrible, horrible thought. <laughs> thought, but it could happen. Don't yeah. want to be found. Cut your arm off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, my daughter dropped her cell phone in a puddle. Oh, yeah. That's so painful. gone. Yeah. yeah. Finished. I've washed mine before. You have? I have. I had my Lululemon uh, jacket, went for a workout, put it in the washing uh -huh. machine. That was great. I see. Well, I'm happy to hear you're not totally perfect. Uh, uh, <laughs> far from uh, it. Tw <laughs> tweet, you tweet, right? Yes, of course. Well, and and it's not a name necessarily. What has a reputation that it's a, a name, but some businesses are, are tweeting? This is a good point. There's, um, I mean, Twitter has, it's been talked about. People are going, well, what is Twitter? Well, for those of people who aren't familiar with it, it's a microblogging site, same as Facebook, where you just update your status, but it's mm -hmm. just updating your status all the time. So before I come on here, I'm like, I'm going on Fanny's show, watch the TV show today. Um, I have a good experience at Starbucks. I'm like, oh, I just had a great, I just tried out, the it's awesome, here you go. So a lot of CEOs um, and executives within companies are using Twitter or social networking sites to be transparent, to show the human side of who they are within their business today, right. to communicate not only with their clients, but their employees to build more loyalty. And will Twitter last, do you think? As a, I know it's the fastest growing social social website. Will mm -hmm. it last? Is there a future for Twitter? I think that those things are always so hard to predict because these sites can they play such an important role in shaping how we communicate. Um, but there's so many things in the background of how they're actually running the business and whether or not another company will develop the technology and take it to the next level before them to see whether or not it'll sure. they can monetize that and stick around. Okay, but you know, the, as uh, there is executive tweets, as you know, the yeah. ING Direct people like that are yeah. executive tweeting. They yeah. tell me. Yeah. Executive it's free. It is. Uh, it, they have a group actually on, on uh, Twitter where you can go on and you can see what other executives are doing and see what's going on in the business industry. So that's just an example of grouping like interests together mm. and being able to, it's, it's kind of like um, just having your own social network within right. that one and having common interests. Sure, and if you, if you don't have a Rolodex and you want to be linked in, apparently you, people are trying to get me to link in and it's too complicated for me. It's too, on the LinkedIn or through the executive yeah, tweeting? Yeah, through the LinkedIn site. I don't yeah. trust it. I think, who's getting this information? Who, yes, well, you're my friend. The public. And I, I know, <laughs> exactly. It's true. Yeah, now the LinkedIn yeah. people are trying to get me to start a LinkedIn, and I thought, no. No, you don't want to do it. Well, it's no different than having a MySpace account or a Facebook account. LinkedIn is just a little more professional and more, okay. uh, it, it's used a lot more for business. Um, but the, you're, you do make yourself very excellent right. by, ha by being on these websites. Mm -hmm. And so the more high profile you are, I mean, what the celebrities are all doing it, of course, but they're probably not always doing it themselves. Uh, like Oprah Winfrey probably has right. a team of people that are helping her You've got stay that right. on top of this. Well, this tiny celebrity doesn't have those people. Those people. Oh, I'll <laughs> help you out, honey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you again. Come back in a month or so, okay? Okay. Lindsay Smith, Massive Media Inc. Coming up, he says Victoria Gin is so smooth you don't need tonic, olives, limes, ice, or a martini shaker. Stay with us for a local distiller story.